M0FXB, welcome back to the channel. Someone asked me to show the Balan or the Unun that I like to use. This is described as a 49 to 1 Balan end fed half wave antenna, 1000 watts, 4 band, 5 to 35 megahertz for HF wave. They're only £17.87 delivered. And I use this a lot. Of course, you need to add a wire to it. Otherwise, um, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> So I like them. They're inexpensive. You grab some wire, garden wire, whatever wire you've got lying around, and then um, just add your, just plug your patch lead in to see it there with the SO239. Just trying to show you some good images. Now, you know, a lot of people think they've got to spend loads of money if they want a decent antenna. No, you don't. You just, it's more about, you do need to have the right length of antenna for the band that you're operating. Now, the thing about the the Balan, the 491 Balan, is that they've worked out the 66 foot length of wire with the what's inside. And I'll show you what's inside my one here in a second. Will then enable you to transmit and receive 20, 40 and 10. Not sure about 11. Test it um, without much tuning. Now, depending on your how you've installed it. But if I show you inside my one, just here, look, okay, there's my one. So there's your ferrite ring. There's a capacitor in there as well. And then it's wound in a certain way and a certain number of winds, okay? Do I get it a bit brighter or not? Okay, let's see if I get that. I'm trying to hold it in front of the camera so you can see it. And I would add some sealant on all the joints and that if you don't want it to get wet. So our, I'm just reading Google. A 49 to 1 ballon, also known as an unun, works by transforming a high impedance, typically around 3,000 to 5,000 ohms, at the end of a long wire antenna into a lower impedance 50 ohms, which is what our radio shoots. That is more suitable when connecting to a radio or antenna tuner. The transformation helps to improve the signal transfer and reduce losses, especially when using N-fed half-wave antenna. Impedance transformation. The ballon acts as a transformer, changing the impedance of the antenna feed point in, in this case. So it's basically, you've got the, the wire and the, the it's acting as a transformer. It's changing the impedance so that it matches. So if you imagine water shooting out of your radio at 50 miles an hour let's say 50 miles an hour the hole and your antenna is like a pipe yeah and the water has to shoot into the same size pipe so it keeps flowing if you change the impedance then the pipe's either too big or too small and then the, the, the signal or the frequency won't flow how it's meant to flow that's i'm not saying that is the scientific way of explaining it but it's how i always imagine it yeah um you need the flow the two hose pipes to match otherwise you're gonna have a problem you're gonna have a high swr or you're gonna and you're also gonna have the signal reflecting back into the radio but the real proof is is it's actually using it i've been using 49 to 1 balance for about 10 years now and um, to the people that keep saying it's an unknown not a balance that's my look. That's what I say. Um, and the proof's in the pudding. You don't even need to ground this one, although I, I tend to always run the cable from my radios into the ground, into a, a, just a copper spike. I don't do it the scientific way, the way you're meant to do it, which is radios pointing out almost like a spider, spider web and, and all that, because I'm not trying to get the perfect signal. But yeah, if you putting up a big mast and you want it to be perfect. The grounding is stupidly important. And when you think about these antennas on hills uh, for our phone, they spend just as, a, as much money in the ground as they do with the antenna that you see. And that says a lot. The grounding is super important if you want that optimum setup. But for most of us, we just chuck a wire out the window chuck it across to a post. If we're lucky, we've got a bush or a tree we can also connect it to. We'll dog leg it. That's all our HF band sorted. It's not amazing. If you're in the UK, you're gonna do well in Europe. You'll probably do quite fine with the USA. Why? Because it's got the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> helping us. Um, and then down to Spain 
as well, which works quite well. And then the whole of Russia, Europe, that whole area is quite good. Outside of that, then uh, you've got to work it a bit. But, you know, the other day someone sent me some, and I'm not a CW operator, he started going, Andreas, can you, I'm on, he was on Hubnet, a local channel, and he said to me, let me send you some Morse code. Um, just tell me if you even hear it, yeah? And I had my HF radio, and I could hear it, yeah? I could hear it, do 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 yeah. Um, so, you know, it can be done, and that's why, you yeah, know, things like FTA and that are so... Uh, are so popular so thank you for watching and um yeah i'll put the link in the description get yourself you know a lot of waffle but get yourself get yourself one look at my new look at that get yourself a ballon dig out some garden wire go to the your local hardware buy a big reel of garden wire it's like six pound and the amount of antennas you can make from that and don't be you don't only you aren't only able to make the big antennas for the HF bands. You can cut antennas for 70 centimeters for two meters, which is 145 megahertz. You can make yourself a CB dipole, yeah. Um, and the whole point of a ballon as well is coax is not a balanced, it's not balanced. So the wire that's inside the coax, the middle core, yeah, is a different. Uh, impedance to the braid that they tend to wrap around um, the coax yeah to keep that frequency in but it's also the the earth side of the antenna it's different so we have to balance that out and that's that's what balance do they balance that out if you see there's other ones that are called twin feeders so it almost looks like a little plastic lad black ladder the two lines and you see them in a g5rv yeah they're they are the same so that's already balanced, but we we don't tend to use that as coax because coax protects the signal and stops interference. Um, so that's why using a twin feeder all of the time is not a good idea because you're not if you want a long run of say twenty meters, you need that good quality coax to keep that signal where it's meant to be. Bye for now, seven three. And if anyone wants to correct me on anything I've said, please do. Yeah. I'm not the expert. I'm just me playing radio. 7-3 all the best.